Yeah. 모두 다 빨리 박수 쳐 기다리지 말고 서둘러 무슨 내란 밝혀서 to feed you raps I see that you are babbler So fly All right, Steve. Awesome topic for you uh, today. Uh, Stephen A. Smith. We just talked about this yesterday. Uh, he tried to explain uh, his whole Donald Trump relatable deal, and and he got all kinds of backlash from the NAACP. How dare you say that black people can relate to Donald Trump's political persecution or criminal justice persecution? <sighs> Stephen A. Smith. Not a man of much backbone and substance. He's already apologizing and backtracking. He put out like a five, six minute apology. Uh, let's watch a couple of minutes of this apology. I wanted to touch on something that I made news about just a few days ago. Let me say this, ladies and gentlemen. <clears throat> Accountability is where everything needs to begin in this world. It's something I say quite often. I certainly never hesitate to hold folks accountable when mistakes or mishaps occur, so I'm certainly not about to run from it myself. I'm fully aware that I've been in the news over the last few days, paraded all over social media as well, after comments I made during my appearance on Fox News' Hannity last week with the one and only Sean Hannity himself. And I'm fully aware of the outcry that has ensued because of it. A lot of folks in black America seem pretty pissed at me right now. From friends and loved ones to colleagues, contemporaries, and dare I say, even the NAACP itself. Quite a few folks were put off, if not flat out offended, after my words were interpreted as associating support for Trump from the black community with all the legal issues he's facing. For that, I sincerely apologize. To be clear, my words were misconstrued. <laughs> I'm stating right here for the record that my words were taken out of context, misrepresenting and depicting me in a way I found every bit as insulting and disrespectful as folks in black America evidently felt about what they thought I said. But I'll own it anyway. Because, you know, please know that I know the buck stops with me. I'm in the communication business. I've been here for 30 years, so... Regardless of whatever interpretation that accompanies any words coming out of my mouth, the responsibility ultimately lies with me first and foremost before anybody else. I've always felt that way. I still do. I always will. Period. Blacks who refuse to support Trump are aware of his history of issues. And we'll never forget how Trump claimed Obama, the nation's first black president, wasn't even qualified to hold office because he was born in Kenya although Trump recanted the statement during his 2016 campaign run for the presidency. Yet Trump's dissenters were not the topic of discussion when I was talking to Hannity. The support he appears to be receiving in the polls was what was being discussed. <laughs> Stephen A, no backbone. I, I just, I, I, I don't even... <laughs> Your thoughts? Uh, Stephen A. Capitulate. I mean, his nickname, remember Three Fingers Brown, the old baseball? I'm going to call him uh, No Toes Smith because he's, he does not stand 10 toes down. He's no toes down. I've never seen a guy back up and retreat, uh, maybe like France in the 1940s, maybe during World War II. I, here's the thing. He's trying to toe this fine line between being critical of the current presidential administration uh, and where it's leading America today, but then also not getting the heat for basically in his own way. And again, I don't want to put words in his mouth saying that other guy uh, wasn't so bad. In fact, we had it pretty good. But I, I have a question, though. Uh, do black pundits not have a right to have their own feeling? I, I don't see this pressure on anyone white, certainly not Asian or really maybe Latino a little bit. But, but I've always found it an interesting dynamic, the collectivism that exists with black announcers, journalists, and media members, that there's a great pressure to be on one side of the political aisle, and then they get ostracized if they're on the other realm of it. And that's why I give so much credit uh, to yourself, Jason. You take the bullets every day, and then the independent con um, content makers like Officer Tatum, 
uh, chaotic truth, Oc Nation, Black Gen Z, Black conservative perspective. I can go on and on. Uh, Hood Servative, that's another guy I like. Angry Man, shout out to them. I give those guys credit because they have guts. They have a certain amount of guts that a guy like Stephen A. Smith simply would not or could not ever have. Here's what's somewhat amazing to me. His comments are uh, innocuous and just, just not very harmful or impactful. That, hey, black people find Trump relatable because of, of you know, the criminal justice problems he's having. That, that, that's not a controversial statement. It's not an impactful statement. It, but look at the reaction. And the NAACP's putting out statements, and they're putting all this pressure on. You got to back that up, back that up. <clears throat> Stephen A., and I know it seems innocent. He, he lied about his basketball career at Winston-Salem State. But, but he's a journalist who wrote a book filled with lies. He's never answered for any of it. And again, it's not just about his Winston-Salem State career. It's just he wrote a book about himself that's filled with preposterous, provable exaggerations, fabrications, and outright lies. No one cares. You can be a journalist who's very flexible with the truth, NAACP, no one black will put any pressure on him, other than me, I guess, but, but no one cares. And so he can be totally uh, distant from truth and face no heat. He can offer an opinion, an innocent, harmless opinion about Donald Trump, and all hell will rain down on him to the point that he's issuing apologies and blah, blah. It, it's amazing, and it speaks to like the NAACP has no integrity. These other organizations that are putting pressure on him, these other little groups or whatever, they have no integrity. They don't care about the truth. They, all they care about is message and promoting the narrative. And again, this is why I just said and have been saying for months now, this guy's installed. He's got puppet strings on him. He knows that those millions of dollars that he's attached to from ESPN are dependent upon him maintaining certain narratives. And this just goes to prove it. It's like, because again, if he, if he, those puppet strings weren't there, he just say, hey man, I said it. I ain't backing up on it. Screw y'all. I, 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 but he can't do that because he knows that will cost him dollars and he's, he's got to promote certain narratives and he's got to pretend like Donald Trump is Adolf Hitler in disguise. Basically, what he has right now, Jason, is freedom with a leash. Think about it. Like you said, he started his own podcast, his own platform. And a lot of those comments that are more right-centric than left seem to be coming on his own independent form, right? That, that's the pattern that I've detected. But at the same time, he's also got this really great gig with ESPN. So it's freedom with a leash. I mean, he can go out. He can roam. But there's a leash that always pulls him back and keeps him in a certain place. I have a question, though, for everyone that is ripping Stephen A. Smith that's up in arms. Why does his opinion, or whatever his vote may be, why does it affect you people so much? Yeah, I said you people. Why? Does it solve anything if he came out and did a 180 on everything he said? That if he wore a, a President Biden button, would it suddenly make your life better? Would it clean up your community? Um, I, I have, I'm just being serious because Barrington Mar uh, Martin, I believe, on Twitter, I know that you follow him. He, he made some great points. He says, what has this collectivism gotten us as a community or as a group? In, sa in fact, since this whole movement of collectivizing, collectivism, have things gotten better or worse for your people? That's the question that I have. Well, listen, he, he their argument is that it's important for, for it to be normalized, the belief that anything in support of Trump is, in, is really in support of destroying, enslaving, taking the vote away from black people. And if, mm -hmm. if Stephen A breaks character, and that's why I call all these guys, they're character actors, they're method actors. They stay in character 24-7. And so the role that they're required to play is, oh, boy, if Trump gets back in office, they're going to reinstitute slavery. Now, I know they didn't do that the first four years, but this time they're really going to do it. And so he's got to stay in that character and that mindset 
And if he breaks character, if he comes out of that method acting, Dr. Umar or the self of, not that Umar is doing this, but somebody's going to come out and give him 20 lashes uh, for, hey, you broke character. You got to play the victim and you got to continue to pretend like Donald Trump, he's Massa Reynolds and he's going to put us back in chains. It's, it's a difficult job. But yeah, well, Umar needs to get uh, get to opening that first day of school of his. But I'm just I just I'm just going to bring this up again for uh, Stephen A. Smith. It's not important who we vote for, even endorses, or any of these athletes that preach to us. Uh, I'm going to go back to this: put a few dollars into your community and build properties, own properties, open businesses, and, and create an economy where the black dollar stays in the black community. I hear that a lot. Okay. So don't worry about this other stuff. It's gotten you nowhere for 50, 60 years. Drive the Koreans out. You seem to hate them. Everyone else is moving out. We're kind of stuck there, which is fine. But my view is this. For anyone that preaches that message, um, the real pressure should be economically. Uh, there is no political medicine for what is making our culture sick. There are no miracles. There are no political miracle workers. It does not work like they've tried to vote their way out of this or into a situation for the past half century. Judge the results. Thank you, Steve. Uh, great job. And thank you, Cardio Miracle, uh, for allowing this. Support healthy blood flow and deliver more vitamins, nutrients, and minerals to your entire body. Get started now for a healthier, happier you by visiting cardiomiracle.com fearless. Receive 10% off your first order, 15% if you choose to subscribe and save. They also offer a 60-day, no-risk, 100% money-back guarantee. Thank you for watching. Don't miss a second of Fearless. Hit that like button and subscribe to keep up with all of our latest content.